Kimetsu no Yaiba, aka Demon Slayer Season 4, Episode 2, Water Hashira Giyu Tomioka's Pain, Recap and Review, baby. Don't forget, I ain't just here to talk to myself. After this video is over with, let me know how y'all feel about it in the comments. Now, without further ado, let go. So to begin, we show the scene from the last episode where Lady Tamiyo is talking to Master Kaguya's messenger crow. Yushiro knows something isn't right and is sprinting all over the house. Yo, if you already seen the last episode, you already seen this scene. So after the messenger crow leaves, Yushiro wants to relocate, but Lady Tamiyo lets him know that nah, bro, it's different this time. She states that now that Nezuko has conquered the sun, certain events have been set into motion. She also alludes that it's possible that things had already been set into motion long ago. It shows the scene of them meeting the original sun breathing samurai way back when. Either way, they're moving for what may be the final time. We then cut to Tanjiro reading the master's letter, which is basically letting Tanjiro know that since he can't move anymore, he wants Tanjiro to talk to Giyu for him. Now, apparently Giyu always puts himself into a negative mind state and the master feels like Tanjiro can do something about that. Before that though, Tanjiro has a talk with Aoi, basically in an effort to try to get advice on how he should go about trying to cheer Giyu up because he don't really know Giyu like that. So he's like, yo, I don't know how to make this dude get into a better mood. What you think? She ends up giving Tanjiro some rice balls, telling him to make sure that they eat all the rice balls first before trying to talk about anything. Cause you know, food puts you in a better mood. <laughs> I know that would help me talk. If somebody brought me some food, yeah, what you wanna talk about? When Tanjiro gets to where Giyu is, he lets himself in and sits down. <laughs> Tanjiro asks Giyu why he's angry. And Giyu says it's because Tanjiro essentially abandoned water breathing in favor of Hinakami Kagura. So he's mad about it because he's supposed to be the next water Hashira. Tanjiro says that according to Urokodaki, changing breathing styles actually isn't that uncommon. And water breathing still serves as a good fundamental base. So it's a good thing he learned it. Giyu said, nah, that's not going to cut it because the water Hashira spot needs to be filled because he isn't the water Hashira. He then kicks an obviously confused Tanjiro out of his room. I'm confused too. What you you're not the water Hashira, bro. Who is then? Before Tanjiro goes, though, he leaves the rice balls outside in front of Giyu's door. Now, some time passes, and later Giyu comes home to see Tanjiro sleeping on the floor waiting for him. <laughs> Tanjiro notices that Giyu seems to have eaten the rice balls, which makes him happy. He then proceeds to follow Giyu around all day and night in an effort to get him to talk to him, which clearly annoys Giyu, but Giyu just keeps on giving Tanjiro the cold shoulder. Now, this goes on for a while until eventually Giyu gives up and decides to just talk to Tanjiro in which he reveals a crazy secret that he never actually passed final selection. What? Now you know how anime gets with his flashback, so we get a flashback showing that Giyu and Sabuto from season one, remember him, the boy with the mask? They actually took part in final selection together back then. Apparently, Sabito was the only person that year that actually died to the demons. It's messed up, man. Now, he didn't die because he sucked. It was the opposite of that. Sabito was actually so skilled, he killed almost every demon on the mountain single-handedly while Giyu got injured by the first demon he even ran into, and the only reason he didn't get killed is because Sabato jumped in and saved him. Now, after some blood loss, Giyu ends up passing out, and when he woke up, he found out that Sabito was killed after running off trying to save somebody else. And while Giyu technically did survive the seven days in the mountain, so he passed, he didn't actually kill a single demon, bruh. So because of that, this whole time, even up to today, Giyu doesn't feel like he's worthy of the title of Hashira. And when he said he's not like the rest of them, he actually meant that he doesn't feel like he deserves to stand next to them as equals. In the end, he doesn't really think much of himself and he feels like Sabito would have been a much better fit as the water Hashira if only he were still alive. This then causes Tanjiro to cry because he can sympathize with the feeling of someone more deserving of you not only dying first, but dying while saving you. He recalls training with Sabito's spirit back when he was learning how to fight and agrees that if Sabito were still alive today, he definitely would have been an incredible swordsman. And of course, that person that Tanjiro is referencing about dying while fighting to save him is Rengoku. My bad. <laughs> Rengoku. Fuck you talking about. Now, as Giyu is about to walk off, Tanjiro ends up asking Giyu if he's going to pass on what Sabito entrusted to him, which causes Giyu to remember a time Sabito actually scolded him for saying he wished he died instead of his older sister after she was killed by demons while protecting him. This man Giyu been through it, bro. Damn, he lost his older sister to demons too? Dang. But after slapping Giyu, Sabato basically let him know that he can't ever give up. And Giyu just realized that he forgot that message until now. And the reason that he forgot the message is because he essentially pushed it away. Because every time he thinks about it, he can't stop crying. Which explains why Giyu is so emotionless all the time. Or I guess now we know it's not actually emotionlessness. It's actually just a deep sadness, more like depression. Now this memory reignites Giyu's will to fight. But just as Giyu's about to tell Tanjiro that he'll join the training, Tanjiro has an idea to challenge him to a speed eating contest. <laughs> under the logic that he wouldn't have to talk during it. And that he can actually ask him to train with him after they're done eating. <laughs> Funnily enough, they actually end up doing the speed eating challenge, Giyu seeming to be in a much better mood than before. 
Now we then cut to Shinobu meditating in an attempt to control her emotions because as some of y'all might remember, the super calm and nice attitude she displays all the time is actually just her imitating her older sister, the late flower Hashira Kane's personality. Shinobu's real personality that she hides is actually full of rage and anger. Anyway, Kano shows up and asks her if she can wait until after the stone Hashira's training to do hers, but Shinobu lets her know that she won't be able to take part in the training this time. Kano expresses that she wants to train with her master more, which makes Shinobu happy that Kano is more open about expressing her feelings ever since Tanjiro made her stop flipping a coin anytime she wants to make a decision and just go with what her heart feels, man. Shinobu then sits Kano down and tells her that now is the perfect time to tell her the story about the demon that killed her older sister. And on top of that, she's about to tell her how to go about killing that demon. And then the episode ends on this cliffhanger like they always do us in anime, goddammit. So that story is going to have to wait until another day. And I don't even know what it's going to be because the next episode is titled Fully Recovered Tanjiro Joins the Hashira Training. My thoughts and opinion on this episode. It was a good episode, bro. You know what I'm saying? They went into a lot of things that were really interesting. First of all, the fact that Lady Tamiyo and Yushiro actually met the samurai with the Hanafuda earrings way back then. Huh, didn't know that. They showed the little scene. That's dope. It's also pretty interesting that the master kind of knew the way Giyu was going to act about this whole little situation and the fact that Tanjiro could be the one that maybe cheer him up. He like, yo, Tanjiro, you got a positive head. You got a positive heart. You know what I'm saying? You affect people on a deep level. You tend to be able to talk no jutsu motherfuckers into feeling differently about things. Go talk to that boy Giryu, man. See if you, I said Giryu, Giyu. <laughs> See if you can cheer him up. And it's crazy because we've been seeing Giyu since the beginning of Demon Slayer, bro. But we ain't never really got no true delve into his backstory, bro. We ain't never really got that. I don't know if that's going to be his whole little backstory. They might even have more to talk about. But for now, that's crazy. That man was actually best friends with Sabito. And Sabito was actually even better than Giyu was back then. This dude Sabito would be broken if he was still alive, dog. He literally killed all the demons on the island. I mean, not the island, on, in, in, in the mountain, bruh. The only reason Giyu and a lot of other demon slayers even lived through Final Selection is because Sabito was the one killing all the demons, bruh. That's crazy. It sucks, though, that after killing all the demons on the mountain, he was pretty much so exhausted that he died to whatever demon that it was that killed him, bruh. Because the other people survived. I guess they ran away or whatever, but that man died. He was the only one to not past final selection, which sucks because he was probably the most worthy. He was going to be the water Hashira. According to Giyu, Giyu's the current water Hashira. But he's like, nah, man, this dude, this dude Sabato was way better than me. If he was alive and lived through final selection, it'd have been him for sure. I mean, that kind of shows that Giyu wasn't even really that good in the first place. Like, he kind of, after having that change of mindset, started working really, 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 really hard. And that's how he got good enough to become the water Hashira. But in f at first, he wasn't even really all that good, bro. He, he got injured by the first demon he ran into. But at least after Tanjiro made him remember all of that, he was able to get over himself and decide to join in the training. I don't know if he's still like completely healed after remembering that memory from Sabito, like scolding him and telling him, bro, don't give up. Like just don't, you, you're not allowed to quit, bro. What's wrong with you? He's probably not fully healed, but he's at least in better spirits and he's willing to partake in the training. They haven't said nothing about Makomo yet, the other girl that was with Tanjiro or with Sabito when they was training Tanjiro back when he was learning how to fight. I don't know what's up with her. They probably gonna talk about her at some point. They got to, man. That was pretty much it with Giyu. That kind of explained his character and why he acts the way he acts. He was kind of like the Mist Hashira, bro. Like, used to be happy dude. And then, you know, after some tragic stuff happened to him, he kind of went emotionless, or emotionless. But the Miss Hashira is the other way around. He kind of stifles his emotions because when he lets his emotions go crazy, he blacks out. And I mean, we kind of need that, bro. You better crash out when Muzan come. Speaking of hiding your emotions, we got another Hashira who does it, Shinobu, but she does it by masking her emotions with another emotion. Instead of asking or acting emotionless, she acts like her late sister, the original flower Hashira, kind of I don't know what it was Shinobu was mad at, but it showed her sitting down meditating and then the little veins popped on her face showing that she was like actually pissed the fuck off. So is Shinobu just in a perpetual state of pissed off? Like some I'm always angry, Marvel Hulk type shit? Maybe. Then Kano out here showing character development, you know what I'm saying, expressing her feelings without having to flip that damn coin. I'm glad Tanjiro got her out of that. Hey, if y'all know what I know, let me not say that. I don't want to spoil nothing. I don't want to spoil nothing. I don't want to spoil nothing. <laughs> I almost spoil some crazy shit. Let me not say nothing. But yeah, that shit is crazy, bro. She about to tell the story of the demon that killed her older sister and how to kill the demon? What? But again, I don't even know when we're going to get that because the next episode is about Tanjiro recovering and getting back to the Hashira training. So who knows when that's going to be, bro? But either way, we delving more into the backstories of the Hashira. I like that. Uh, we're going to get into Shinobu before this arc is over with, according to what they showed. I wonder who else we're going to talk about. Who else is left, bro? It's really just the Stone Hashira, right? We don't, Stone Hashira is the only one we don't know anything about. I mean, I guess they didn't really get deep 
into the wind Hashira's backstory because his is kind of intertwined with the Mist Hashira's. That's his older brother. In case some of y'all forgot. So I don't know, dog. Huh? Oh, they ain't went into the Snake Hashira's backstory at all. Yo, yeah, we gotta talk about him. The Snake Hashira and the Stone Hashira. Them the only ones that are left, right? I think so. I think so. I don't know if they're gonna say that for the next arc because from what I'm hearing, there is one more arc after this one. So. Man, god damn it, bro. After this 12 episodes, 11 episodes, whatever is over with, we gonna have to wait till 2025, 2026 <laughs> to finally finish Demon Slayer. If you read the manga, Demon Slayer is already over. But I'd rather watch the anime, so I'm gonna wait on that. But yeah, man, that is gonna do it for this recap slash review. Great episode, man. I hope y'all enjoyed it, bro. Like I said, this is just my idea of doing these. If you ever see the episode go up and then it disappears, it's because they copyright claiming my shit. They copyright claimed the first one, despite all the work I did, bro. The first episode was 48 minutes. My review is like 12 minutes, and it ain't even the whole 12 minutes that I showed the episode. You know how much I cut that episode up? Still claimed it, but I did a dispute. And I won the dispute. So the video's back up. If you ain't seen my review on episode one, bow or bow. It's right there. Check it out. And make sure y'all let me know y'all thoughts and opinions on Demon Slayer in this episode down in the comment section. Make sure y'all show a lot of love to this video. Like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, we up out of this thing. It's your boy Darwin signing out. Thanks. Yeah.